Hey guys, this is Neon Nezzy, back again with another Destiny Knights video, and today we are going to be talking about the latest patch notes that came through. Not, not, not really a patch note, it's more like the next thing that's going to happen in the game. It They were released about 24 hours ago, and I know I'm late, but I was just super tired, guys. And a lot of you, if you guys are on the Facebook uh, community of Destiny Knights, you guys will have seen this already. Basically... It is that the servers are merging, all right? Korea and Asia are the two servers right now. They are going to be merging. There are a lot of things I want to talk about in this video right now, so I might go super fast, and I apologize in advance, but there's a lot of things I want to talk about, and I just don't have too much time. So, first of all, servers merging. What does this mean? It means that the game was... I mean, the game did have a... It, it lost a lot of clientele, right? It lost a lot of um, content creators and more so it lost a lot of players. This can kind of revitalize the game in a sense that now we have more players coming in from Korea and Asia and both are servers that have been here since the beginning of the game. So everybody, so both of these servers have have really OP players and I'm super looking forward to uh, competing with these guys. Uh, when it comes to Destro and um, Arena and um, Jack's Puzzle and whatnot. One thing that I do want to say is that this does not mean that the game is glowing global, all right? Yes, pre-registration is open for uh, global release, but we don't know when it's going to happen. It is going to happen, but we don't, but we don't know when it's going to happen. And this right here is not the same as global release, so I don't want people to get the wrong idea. Server merge means that your friend list, your guild, your guild achievements, guild quest information, your guild name, everything that you've purchased uh, is all going to stay the same, right? Nothing's going to change. The only things that are going to change are the rankings when it comes to arenas, both special and common, faction boss, Jack's puzzle, descended dungeon, hero and hero rings and statistics, they are all going to change because now we have to get a new database combining all of the players from Korea and Asia, which I think is again amazing. Um, total of two ranking rewards will be released in the first week of August due to the server merge. So the first one is going to be happening on the Monday of that week and then the update's going to happen on the Wednesday, and then after Wednesday is going to be the second ranking rewards. So, it's coming out in August. We know that they generally update um, during Wednesdays. So it's going to be either Wednesday the 1st or Wednesday the 8th of August. Now, I'm pretty sure it's going to be on the 1st, but on the off chance that it's not, please don't get too discouraged. It's coming just a week from then on the 8th, Pretty sure by the 8th we should see these servers merge. Um, Easy the Gamer and I were talking yesterday, and this is some really serious stuff, all right, guys? So before I say, before I move on, can everybody just go to Arena or to your, um, or to anywhere else that you guys might have a option of saying something to people that uh, meet you or uh, compete with you? Cancel whatever you guys have. Uh, and it's just a request from me and, you know, nothing bad's going to happen. It's just a request from me. If you guys want to do it, you guys can do it. If you guys don't want to do it, don't do it, all right? Like, at the end of the day, it's your game. But I would just like people to start running this hashtag over here called Trust in Devs. Reason behind this is because I feel that the developers are trying really hard and... Any developers in any game, they will not tell you anything about the new update until everything has been finalized. And even after it's been finalized, they will not reveal information until the day of. So, Destiny 6 is not different. All developers are like are like that in the sense that you don't get any information before the update. I think, though, there's no sugarcoating it. The game definitely lost a lot of clientele. But the developers are still going strong. Netmarble is a huge, huge company, so they definitely have the resources to pull through. And I think they've been doing an amazing job. So go ahead and run that hashtag trust in developers because I have placed my trust in them from the very beginning, and so has Ease of the Gamer. 
All right, easy and I, I think it's safe to say, uh, al- al- along with, um, I, I'm i so sorry, I don't know how to say your name. It's Willie Nizer or Willieser. He generally does uh, just a lot of summoning videos and every now and then he'll do Faction Boss. But he's out there too. I think it's the three of us that have really just tried our best to keep this community going even when um, a lot of big content creators and majority of the people start stopped playing Destiny 6, now Destiny Knights. And it's kind of discouraging um, because Easy texted me the other day and he was kind of like hysterical, you know, he was laughing, but at the same time I didn't know if he wanted to cry. <laughs> And then, and then he told me what was going on, and then I felt the same. Like I don't know if I was happy or I was, or like I wanted to cry. Is just the fact that, and and this is serious stuff, guys. All right, I I know that I'm being a drama queen right now, but we searched up Destiny Knights, and neither of our videos popped up. All right, there were a bunch of new people that have started making videos on Destiny Knights since uh, there's news about it being released globally, which is great. But we realized that none of our videos are showing up because we have always published them under the title Destiny 6. So we have to remake all our videos, basically, which honestly, I don't mind. But what I do hope happens is that the community doesn't forget us in the sense that Easy was always the one trying to bring out um, entertainment content, you know, funny videos with all his amazing edits that took him hours. And then I was the one that would just try and farm as much information as I can, bring you guys as accurate information as I can. And that in itself took a lot of time. And now, uh, you know, like we see these new people coming out, which is great for the community. All right. I'm super thrilled, but their one video already got like 5,000 views. I can't remember the last time I got 5,000 views. Or I think one of my video has like 10,000 views and that's it. Nowadays I'm lucky if, if, if I get 300 views. So I just hope that the community doesn't forget us because we definitely tried to keep the game going. Um, we, we, we put money in, into the game. We tried to do uh, tons of summons. So we got new units to uh, keep bringing you guys out content. We did gift card giveaways. And speaking of gift card giveaways, Adonis DRC. All right, this is my public apology to you. I have not given out the gift cards yet because Metcan has not replied to me. So Adonis DRC, today I'm sending you your gift card regardless. If Metcan wants his, he can or she can tell me. But for now, I'm just sending you your gift card and Adonis DRC. Let me know what your line or WhatsApp chat is because in order to make it up to you, I would love to have you on in one of my videos for like 15 minutes and you can ask me anything you want. All right, it's a huge screw up on my part and I take full responsibility for it. So last and final thing that I want to do is I want to start being serious about Destiny 6 again. Yes, I'm playing Might and Magic, but Destiny 6 is always going to be my main game. So from now on, I'm going to try and bring up videos almost every two days and and I'll be doing my weekly videos again where I cover the units that are in the current summoning rotation. So right now, for example, we have Adonis and we have Elki. So let's head straight into the codex. And basically the idea of this is that every two minutes I swap these units. All right, so I'm, I'm not sure. Is there a... Is there a stopwatch that that's on Google? Let me just Google it up real, real quick, guys. All right, so there is a stopwatch. And basically what this is going to do is that I'm going to be giving out as quick, as accurate information on these units as possible to give you guys the information as fast as possible and not take up too much of your time. So five, four, three, two, one, let's do this. First off, we have Paper Adonis, possibly the best unit in the game as officially declared by YDCB in 2018. His skills, first one, is probably the best skill in the game with solid stance, 40 second cooldown. It is a invulnerability shield. Not only does it make you invincible through damage, but it also makes you invincible to any kind of debuffs. At max skill, this will go up to 35 seconds cooldown. The damage, the damage equal to defense, nobody cares about that, all right? Forget about that. 
you're immune to shield. You, you, you have the best condom ever made. The condom that was not made in China. What else do you need? Next up, we have the Giga Crash. It is a break skill, 35 seconds second cooldown. At max, it'll go to 30 seconds and break point of three. AO damage goes up and the knockback chance stays the same. However, the decreasing the target, um, decreasing the target, target's attack goes up from 45% to 60% and still is for 15 seconds. Leader skill is defense of Silo's faction gets increased by 10% and the strike is the solid sense again, but it's for 8 seconds. Personally, never run him on the striker position, always have him on your core 3. I think the best way to orb this guy is to go full Iron Guard. I know it's called Iron Wall or something, but as Nezi, I always call it Iron Guard. For Cress, no point in even arguing about it, just go straight up crit, I mean not sorry, not crit, grit. For cooldown reduction, try to get him at 60% cooldown reduction, which will then bring your shields of 35 seconds to a 14 second shield, meaning you only need to survive for 7 seconds. Alright, that being said, maybe next you would want to maybe get some defense in there, but honestly, just get him school, just get skill cooldown on him and you are good to go. Next up, let's move on to his brother, Rockadonis. Probably one of the best units in the game, but again, overlooked on by his brother. Probably the only buff you'll ever need in the game. First skill, buffs attack and attack speed. And look at that. At max skill, it has a 33 second cooldown with AoE damage of attack and increases your attack by 40% and attack speed by nothing less than 60% for an entirety of 15 seconds. Awesome, awesome skill for attackers. And check this out. To play it safe, his second skill will give you a defense buff it also deals damage in line of defense. At max skill, it will have a 35 second cooldown with increase in defense by 50% and status resist by 45% for 15 seconds. Honestly, one of the possibly the best units in the game. He does have, uh, he skills off of attack. So honestly, in my opinion, I think the best way to, uh, to do him in is simply to go crit. I know it seems kind of weird, but honestly, it really just depends on you give him any, anything you want. I would personally go crit just for the damage, but you can go bravery, iron guard, um, crit, punishment. Don't go punishment. Punishment is still crap. Don't use that ever. Again, with him, I would try to get a full 30. I would, I would actually try to get 60% uh, cooldown reduction. And the second stat that I would focus on, bleed or not, guys, is resistance. Because resistance on your team is going to accumulate over time. And if you have enough resistance with his leader skill, you should be never taking stuns as long if you guys don't have anybody to give you invulnerability or immunity shields, he could be your mm, innate passive kind of immunity. All right. Whew. That was three minutes and 40 seconds, guys. All right, let's move on to actually crap, 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 crap. His, oh, sh his striker position, never use him in striker position. Or done. I was still under four four minutes. <laughs> Alright, let's go to Inua. <clears throat> no, Silvis. Alright, three, two, one, go. First off, guys, we have Scissor Elki. First skill is Eclipse. Breakpoint of two, but it gets better because throughout the entire duration of this charging, you'll be applying breaks. You can't reapply the break to the creature, the creature that you just broke, but it will apply break to anybody else that enters in that area of effect. Cooldown goes down by nine whole seconds, breakpoint goes up to three. Your AoE damage goes up from 45% to 75%. Your chance to vacuum goes up from 14 to 16%. Duration goes from 1.5 to 3. And the damage that the target uh, takes is increased by from 30% to 40%. I'm sorry, 50%. And the duration goes from 10 to 15 seconds. Honestly, possibly one of the best units in the game. If you guys want, build her with high status activation for her first skill. It's a chain of card control just on her own. However, people really like her for her second skill, Twilight, the only unit in the game that cleanses again and again and again per tick. There's no other unit in the game that has this mechanic. Who cares about the heal? First of all, the heal is AoE and anybody that steps into that area of effect takes immense damage. Secondly, her heals are probably one of the biggest heals in the entire game and every tick you will be cleansing yourself. What more do you need? Oh, wait, sorry, there is more. You don't want it? Sorry, there it is. When you equip her as your leader, everybody in your team will take 25% reduced damage. 
paired with the who need who paired with the new stage conquer effect that is basically a 75% reduction in damage taken if you guys have a paper francisca hello one two three damage you will probably never take anything more than two damage in scenario honestly some people use it in arena for the striker position personally i would always use it in my core three next up we have paper helga in my opinion she is good but she could be better i mean sorry this is paper elki i compare with paper helga because paper helga has her second skill or maybe it's her first skill that basically does the same thing increase status activation but look at this duration guys Status activation chance will increase by 80% for 4 seconds, which is great, but Paper Helga does it by 60% or maybe 50% for an entirety of 15 seconds. That is insane. If you guys miss this window chance of 4 seconds, you're done. You're screwed. Alright, Conquest everything out the window. AoE damage goes up, so she definitely does an enormous amount of damage. However, this is not a multi-hit, it is a single target. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a once, it's a one hit hit. One hit hit, is that doesn't make sense? Let's forget about it. Let's just say it does. Then she has a 35 chance to decrease the target status at resistance by 35%. It's basically everything that, that you need. Take this. You reduce their resistance by 50% and you increase your own accuracy by 80%. That's 30% overkill. First skill, Final Despair restrains them. They can still, I think when it, when it says restrained, they can't move, but they can still use their they can still use their abilities. So in PVE, it's a very noob way to play it safe. But in all honesty, I'm so OP that I would never need to use a restraint. Why? Because I have my Adonis, like I said, remember, on 60% cooldown. It's an 80% chance of restraint. Have her, in my opinion, with vitality and grit. And also for her for her counterpart, Vitality and Grit, for her, I would say get 60% cooldown reduction as with her sister, but only on her. Try to get at least 20% status activation. You guys can even use Precision Crest if they have really, really, really good skill down reduction, skill cooldown reduction substats. So that is 7 minutes and 54 seconds, and I just covered 4 units. Whew! I hope I didn't miss anything. Holy cow. All right, we're still under 20 minutes. So, again, guys, I really do hope that this new server merge brings us a lot of content. It just, it's not going to bring us a lot of content. It's going to bring us a little bit more competition, which, again, Arena right now, in my opinion, is broken. So it might you guys might not see it immediately. But the one cool thing is that Easy the Gamer did promise me that when anything like this happens, he'll be coming over onto my guild. So right now, it's like the two content creators that focus on bringing on content to the focus on bring on uh, content to the community. Like every few days, we're both going to be in the same guild. It's going to be awesome. And this guild, guys, is a fountain of knowledge. All right. Let me just prove it to you, guys, really, really quick, all right? Really, really, really quick. Let's just... Let me just prove it to you guys, all right? Destro. Look at who's number four. Antonella. Antonella? Oh. Degeneration. Pytoplankton. Huh. Oh, wait, they all have something in common. Delicious. As in... YDCB's guild from Summoner's War? Yes, guys. Believe it or not, in our WhatsApp chat of Destiny 6, I've actually been able to chat with YDCB a few times because Antonella does know him, and he was part of this guild. I, I feel like some of the players here overlap in Summoner's War and, and in Destiny 6, and it is by far one of the most active guilds that I have been in. Let's go with the guild really, really quick. Where's guild? There is guild. Level 26, we have daily gold boosters, and if we look at our members, possibly some of the best players in the game. So, super, super excited to be here. Every now and then, Antonella will just give, give out like some mad information, and there's someone in the guild, I don't know his or her name, but they give out advice to Antonella. So it's just like the god of gods. 
So anyway, guys, I hope this game goes far. It stays strong. If you guys like my content, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. If you guys have any questions, any question at all, please let me know in the comment section down below. Adonis DRC, let me know what your line ID is or your WhatsApp or however I can get a hold of you. Um, trust in devs. And until the next time, guys, Neon out.